topic? Awesome. What is the next topic? All right. The next topic is that China has banned iPhones for government employees. And they've banned them because they have concerns about Western spying through iPhones because they have an always on microphone. So interestingly enough, I think we should also have a huge issue with the fact that our iPhones, which are currently next to us, have yeah. an always on microphone. But it's not unreasonable for anyone to think that their phone isn't spying on them. We have, you know, I, uh, you, and you've probably experienced this too, where you say something, right? You talk about uh -huh. a certain brand and then all of a sudden on your social medias yeah. and, and on shows the websites up. you visit, it shows up. That's Why true. is that? because your phone is always listening to you and it's terrifying. And somehow we push it out of our minds and say, well, oh, it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. Well, apparently China said it, it is. is that big of a deal. And for our government employees, we don't want them to have iPhones anymore. That led to within 24 hours of that ban, that led to a loss of 200 billion in stock valuation for Apple. It's about time. So what did we think is gonna happen? Because China is going to yeah. tolerate that to a degree. So as a matter of fact, I just find that there are now problems inside Taiwan regarding the yeah. uh, TSMC, mm -hmm. Taiwan Semiconductor yeah. Corporation, right? TSMC. Anyway, so <laughs> I found that that now their CEO now is waking up to the hard truth. Yeah. And let alone for us here, the $70 billion project ain't going to take off. Yeah. So now you got companies now saying... We're not getting things done because we don't have access to. Right. So basically, we're in a simple language, our policy backfired. Yeah. Which means it wasn't thought out. It was emotional reaction. And this is what happens with yeah. when it comes down to phone policy. This is why you never, ever allow emotions to dictate yeah. phone policy. Well, and, and never also as much as you can yeah. never allow motion emotions to dictate how you feel about global events because the news wants you to be scared all the time, time. because they're a business. And yeah. if you're not addicted to the news cycle that, and, and if you're not having all these high emotions about everything that's going on all the time, yeah. then they don't have a product and you don't keep tuning in and you don't keep basically giving them a business. So it's important also to take emotions out of what's happening in the world and look at it flat. So one of those things is the fact that the the Taiwanese based chip maker TSMC yeah. is 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 maybe the top of the top in terms of chip making. And you just talked about the facility that's being built here in the United States. Yeah. So according to that, this so the 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 technology that building is apparently eight years behind yeah. the most advanced technology. Yeah, it's, um, it's not going to work. I mean, the moment I what? heard about it a few months ago, because we don't have the infrastructure, when I say infrastructure, right. I'm not referring just to the buildings and all that. that, that stuff can be managed. The finances mm. can be managed. The brain power. Yeah. We don't have that. Yeah. You know, I remember I showed you guys the, the, the tweet that I got oh, yeah. as far as how much China Produces when it comes down to STEM, yeah, uh, I think it's science, two million, technology, like that, yeah. yeah, and how much we produce, yeah, a it, year. It was like there's nothing. So. Here is where where now things are. It's going to be very dicey for us, yeah, here technologically. And I am sure the company is going to push back behind the scenes. Oh, Usually, I'm just sure. kind of stuff we won't never know about or yeah. hear about or see whatever. What just happened? It just Saudi Arabia now has agreed. Uh, to sign a massive deal with China regarding cloud data. Oh God! Massive. Wow. You're looking at about the Saudi, the Chinese rather, mm -hmm. will train about two hundred thousand Saudi developers. Yeah. Which means what? That's Saudis huge. put in massive amount of money. Yeah. So, and if I am to go back to that handshake with yeah. Biden and MBS, it's nothing but a photo up. Yeah. We don't like the fact that Saudi is pivoting east. Yeah, I've been saying this for years, even before I wrote the book about Saudi, mm -hmm. because Saudis are watching the wealth shifting from the west to the east. Yeah, it's been so. Why do you think they went ahead and signed the deals as far as accepting the petrol you won? Yeah, why do you think BRICS went ahead and 
admitted Saudi Arabia. Yeah. You know, those things don't happen in a vacuum. And that is the reason why you need to understand the 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 uh, the economic and political movements yeah. within the global stage. Those have to be a reaction to what lies ahead. What can we anticipate? And yeah. that's what a strategist or an analyst does. Yeah, You have to anticipate and think ahead. Saudis are not dumb just because they, they wear not. a turban Absolutely and sit in dumb. a desert. I used to go yeah. to the desert and just hang out there. And uh, yeah. I don't even know if I still have a picture here. Oh, that would be great. Well, I would love I to see a picture. I, I keep that stuff here. Uh, no, I don't have it here. No. I don't. So, so the idea, just because they're sitting in there, yeah. they're smart also. They're thinking in terms of we're seeing the trends are headed. They're realizing that the U.S. is losing its global power. Yeah. And that's due to our own reckless policies. Absolutely. And now you're seeing what's taking place with this trade with China. And mm -hmm. China's going to have now to push back. And they've been pushing back yeah. because they can afford it. Right. China can afford to do that. Well, and it's not like China doesn't have its own economic issues. No, and they it's, do. And it's, Every country. And and I I want to point out exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. You know, when we're talking about conflict in Taiwan, right? So yeah. you know, over the last year, maybe two years, I guess. Uh huh. There's been so much talk about oh well, you know, democracy in Taiwan and you know mm. all of that. Mm. Take a look at what's happening in Taiwan. So the Taiwanese based chip maker is basically the top of the top in terms of, of chips. Yeah. So why would we be interested in having control over, over the chip maker? Why would China be interested in having control over these chip makers? So we're looking at even when we're when we're hearing you know, when we're hearing, oh, this is about ideology, this is about democracy, what is the economic thing that is going on in the background? And this right here is that because within 24 hours of a ban, Apple losing $200 billion in stock valuation. Now, granted, I do very much believe that'll, you know, some of that'll bounce back. I'm, I'm not a financial advisor by any stretch. That's just my, you know, that's yeah. just my take on it. But that's a lot there's a lot of money at stake here. There is a lot of market share at stake here for these large corporations. There's a lot at stake. And they're not going to be willing to lose that. Yeah. Well, this is why it was like, uh, uh, I looked at it like a, a ticking bomb when, yeah. when Huawei did that. And I even found, uh, let me let me share this with, uh, if you want me guys oh, to yeah. share this with you. Uh, uh, All right, here, add it and just listen carefully here. And I usually vet this stuff and try to read them first before I'll, uh, I'll let any. Yeah, listen to that. Can you hear? I don't think it's playing. There it is. We cannot. Maybe click on it. Maybe click on it. Nope. Nope. Yeah, there you go. Mate 60 mobile device, along with the other devices here. as well. Uh, hey, friends, Mario Cavallo here. Welcome to Counterpoint China. Huawei dropped a bomb on the tech world a few days ago. Uh, and, you know, the, the release of the new Huawei Mate 60 mobile device, along with the, a couple of other devices as well, on SMIC, domestic China. Seven nanometer, holy guacamole, mm. as Batman would say. And it reminded me of a story from 30 plus years ago. You know, I just happened to be reading Rising Sun by Michael Crichton. And as I was mm. reading it, if you read how the description of the Japanese was, the rising Japanese, and we have to stop those Japanese. And it was just absolutely mm -hmm. incredible, yeah. the identical way. All you have to do now, 30 years later, is just substitute the word China for Japan, and you have wow. the exact same geopolitical rhetoric. And back then, the efforts, the sanctions, the Plaza Accords, they stopped Toshiba. They stopped Alstrom. They stopped Japan dead in its tracks. They did. But mm -hmm. the story is they didn't stop Huawei and they didn't stop China. 
And now we know 100% that they can't. The imperial overlords just can't. The only way they're going to be able to reverse the tide of what's happening, which is China rising as the third hegemonic power to world global superpower status. The only way that's going to end is by nuclear war, which will probably end the entire planet. So let's assume that while we think that the United States military industrial complex is crazy, that they are crazy, and that they're a bunch of psychotic Anyway, I just wanted to share this. It's a little bit long, but I just wanted to highlight to you the idea of, uh, because we did that in the 80s. I remember yeah. at the time when Japan was where, mm -hmm. you know, why do you think we introduced certain financial uh, 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 trickery, <laughs> let me use Absolutely. the term, because we were concerned because the economy of Japan was really moving faster than we couldn't even yeah. anticipate. And we said to ourselves, heck no, we're going to have to stop this on its tracks and yeah. limit it. How, uh, do you hear anything about Japan now? Absolutely no, not. No, in fact, their economy is probably the most indebted economy in the world. Yeah. It, it, it's uh, uh, Huawei, with this case now, it mm -hmm. became evident that the, the Chinese wanted to avoid the same outcome. Yeah. So by embarking on their own, even as a matter of fact, some countries in Europe are regretting, including India. You know, India kicked Huawei uh, yeah. because it was pressured to do so. But they are now regretting not having uh, uh, allowing uh, Huawei technology because they will improve their own mm -hmm. infrastructure. But that's that's their own decision. They can decide. So and this is why what I do see coming here in the U.S. is you're going to have now major uh, uh, tech companies pushing yeah. against the administration. But I think that train has already left the station. I don't see. I just don't see china yeah sitting down with the us yes they will sit for protocol or whatever mm -hmm. but that trust is gone and there is no uh, china moved on right that's the way i see well it. and specifically talking about what you're alluding to yeah china moved on because it can and that's a very important piece yeah. of information here because a lot of these things have not happened until now it's not like this is the first time that anybody realized that there was a forever on microphone on the on oh, Apple yeah. products, yeah. right? Yeah. This isn't this isn't new information. And like I said, I think we should be very much more concerned Certainly about not. that than yeah. we are. Um, but there's a reason they did it right now. That's true. Yeah. And that's because they can right now. And I want to. This is something you and I have actually talked about a couple of times. I want to share uh, the cables that mm. the internet cables that are actually running under the ocean because we don't. We don't actually know how many cables there are. Like we as a people, we, there there's information about that, which, are, which I'm about to share. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to add it to the screen right now. So this is uh, the submarine cable map. And this is a very, very cool, this is a very, very cool thing. And I'm going to, uh, uh, if you guys want to check it out, it's submarine cable map. Okay, this right here is all of the internet cables that run through uh, through the, the oceans. Yeah. Now, I want to point something out. Look at how many cables come in and out of, I'm going to get rid of this, show all cables. All right, look at how many cables go in and out of the United States, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're looking at the bulk of the cables actually being processed through the United States. Here's the deal with that. We have a giant NSA. The United <laughs> States is known for spying. And on what planet does anybody think yeah. that it's not yeah. going to be processed through uh, through our our yeah. our spy technologies, right? And and that's not that's that's just reasonable that and yeah. and in some ways that actually is, you know, helping national security. In some ways it's a massive overreach to spy on everybody, but in some ways, you know, I, I see both sides of the argument though. I would like to have less. Yeah, but less when, when dangerous they, oversight. Yeah, but when but, they do it um, on your citizens, that becomes right, even a huge. violation of the Fourth Amendment. So Absolutely. And a lot of people are talking what, about that. Yeah. Um, that's the major one but look at all of these cables they're they're really for the most part they're coming uh they're coming in and out of the united states yeah. okay so uh i'm gonna look up shanghai all right here's what's happening though what's happening though is so i want to point out the shanghai uh cable 
This doesn't run through the United States. Where does it go? It does go to Australia. It does hit parts of Africa, parts of uh, over here in Pakistan, and all the way up through the EU. What this allows for is this allows for China to have lines of communication that are not being tapped by the NSA, so, at least directly, yeah. because they're not being tapped through the United States. Yeah. There's some interesting ways that you can tap into these, right? You can you can take a submarine and go down and, you know, so I'm I'm assuming governments are doing that. But overall, we have we're starting to see. Uh, and then there's another one, actually, um, you know, remember the uh, remember that the naval exercise where China came through over by Alaska. Mm. Okay. So this is reported, but check out what's over here. Check out what is now over here by Alaska. What do we have here? We have mm. a cable that does not in fact go through the United States. You go over it. Yeah. I wonder yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if that has anything to do with it. Well, China does. Uh, it's not a secret. China does not have. It has its own cables that they don't go through the U.S. Right. You know? And and that's yeah for uh, ensuring its own information is not compromised. Mm -hmm. They are doing the same in space with Beidou. That's why they're gonna mm -hmm. go through their own GPS, mm -hmm. not through the U.S. Where the the uh, I want to use the term danger, but where the challenge moving forward with that is that China is going to develop a capability right. through that be, uh, uh, Beidou, be, yeah Beidou, mm -hmm. Beidou, uh, uh, from a military aspect in space, which will be able to blind all the satellites. Yeah, that is where you know it's a capability. This is no different than what they just developed now which doesn't get much coverage. I read mm -hmm. on that in certain military magazines. China just developed now technology to track a submarine. The, this technology, I mean, most countries have that. Yeah, who yeah. have the sim Now, this one is very advanced. Mm -hmm. Even the deepest submarine we can send, they will be able to track it. Which means now from would, space, yeah. Well, right. So far, uh, the one from here, yeah. Okay. Whether the space is, I don't know. Okay. The one I read about is the capability here on on the ground mm -hmm. that they have now the technology to track. So basically, we can we can't hide anymore. Yeah. And they see no matter how much depth we go, mm -hmm. they develop that technology. So is this has to do with this? Maybe, maybe not. But, but one thing for sure, China runs its own cables. Yeah. So, and just to tie it back to our topic with now Huawei announcing that and the launching of this uh, uh, Mate 60 phone, uh, which cost about I think uh, seven hundred. Mm -hmm. uh, so I already That's saw less than an iPhone. Yeah, saw a line of that. that yeah. Thing. So Apple is gonna be hit hard later along. They, they just already moved, have been. Yeah. Moved uh, some of its operations out of India. Yeah. Because it wasn't working. So what I will expect is that probably Tim Tim is gonna reach out yeah. to the White House and say, Hey, we need to have a conversation. Well, quite frankly, it would be nice, Apple, if you wanted to take the uh, forever listening microphone off of all of our phones. Yeah, it would be nice. That would be nice. I, I would appreciate not being spied on nah, all the time to sell would. advertising, yeah. too. But there's one thing that, just FYI for you guys to know, for us, especially if you are an American, mm -hmm. anytime iPhone uh, come up with whatever, yeah. they have to turn over the key, the encryption key to the government. To the government, yeah. Yeah. So well, that's... and maybe that factored into why China put this ban Probably. on. So, so one thing is sure now is that now we see in uh, 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 the technology path now yeah. is being split up. It is. Yeah, it's split up is gonna go. And it's different. been interesting because Tim Cook, so Tim Cook and Elon Musk actually both sort of did this, yeah. um, you know, with all of the narrative, with all of the anti-China narrative that's going on. Those are two specific CEOs who have been very careful yeah. about not saying anything bad about China. Yeah. And that's because they didn't want to lose. The they market, didn't want to lose that market. Share, yeah. uh, unfortunately, right now they are losing that market. They're losing that market share in a huge way. Yeah. But it's been it's very interesting um, the positions that everyone is sort of taking on yeah. China because like I mean I always say this we are not pro China we are not anti China 
This is more about talking about what is actually mm -hmm. happening here in a non-emotional, very straightforward way. Because if you don't have the information, you're going to be surprised when things start to happen and shift dramatically, which they're doing right now. That's why we call it being objective. Yes, so. being objective.